This is ABC 15 Mornings. We are just nine days out from Election Day, and young voters are expected to show up this year more than ever before. So this morning, we're meeting a Young Valley woman who has been waiting her whole life to share her voice and vote. And October is Financial Planning Month, but how are so many people who are hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic expected to save an expert giving some advice to those who are struggling this morning? Helping kids go places by literally putting them on track toward a better future. It is about getting outdoors and making a difference in our community. This is a really cool way to take care of kids in our community. So we'll tell you lots more about that. Hopefully put a smile on your face as we kick off this Sunday morning. I'm Nohe Lani Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson, social distancing from home and Nohe just fantastic weather to get outside and kind of enjoy it. And we even have some rain in the forecast as well, I understand. So we need that too. Yeah, definitely, potentially. So our, our rain chances are kind of dropping off a little bit, but any <laughs> amount that we can okay. get in any area of the valley is definitely needed. And certainly the break from the temperatures is what everybody will get to enjoy and what we definitely need. 69 degrees right now, so it's nice and cool out there. A comfortable morning, open up those windows, especially because you'll feel a little breeze this morning, eight miles an hour blowing out of the east. So our first fall storm does move in tonight and will linger through Tuesday. Our rain chances are down. We're looking at maybe a tenth of an inch of rain now, and it would mainly come early Monday morning, but definitely still looking at snow chances in the high country, one to three inches above 6,000 feet. Our mornings are also about to take a drastic dip in temperatures, so enjoy them while you can while it's still comfortable. If you want to get out for a run, we're going to stay in the 60s and 70s for several hours this morning. Morning. It's going to take us until after lunchtime to even make it into the 80s, but we will warm into the 80s. So I'll talk about that high forecast today coming up in just minutes. All right, no, hey, thank you. Breaking this morning, a Tonopah business destroyed in an overnight fire. Crews on scene telling us that it is a total loss. They responded to that fire at Tonopah Joe's Family Restaurant just after 3 a.m. That's near Indian School Road and 411th Avenue. The owner of the popular spot just in shock this morning. It was, you know, bad. I mean, the fire was coming out from uh, this part of the uh, restaurant by the kitchen. And uh, we started moving all the cars away from the building and tried to save most of the stuff that, uh, you know, it was around the building. The flames now are under control and luckily no one was hurt in all of this. What started that fire is still under investigation this morning. And in Phoenix, a family is displaced after an apartment fire near McDowell and 63rd Avenue. Crews telling us that they found a fire burning in a closet that had moved into other parts of the apartment. Luckily, everyone made it out safely. The incident is still under investigation. Coronavirus cases continuing to rise in our state. Another 890 cases added on Saturday, bringing the total to more than 236,000 since the start of the pandemic. In the meantime, the percentage of tests coming back positive remains above that 5% comfort level. We're now at 7%. The state is also reporting six new deaths from the virus, bringing the total number of lives lost to more than 5,800 just here in Arizona. This weekend, families across the valley are trying to piece together what their work week will look like because several schools are going to be closing due to COVID-19 outbreaks. Not only that, but a lot of concerned kids have their kids uh, that they might have been exposed. So our Adam Waltz spoke with parents who are worried about their children's education as well as their health. East Valley high schools have been hit hard by COVID-19. Cases in the hundreds and thousands more students potentially exposed here in Scottsdale Unified School District. Here's what parents had to say. Having them home all week, I realized how wonderful it was to have them at school. Emmy Cardella's son is a sophomore at Chaparral High School where there are 41 known COVID cases, 18 on the junior varsity volleyball team. Her son is at home now after sharing a classroom with an infected student. I just don't want to get in this loop of having 
tons of kids quarantined all the time. Gilbert's Desert Ridge and Highland High Schools, both with 12 cases. Mesa Public Schools, Arizona's largest district, 21 cases across their high schools, but only two are active right now. J.O. Combs High School, Madison Number 1 Middle, and Wilson School District in downtown Phoenix forced to close due to outbreaks. Saguaro parent Susan Hughes kept her daughter online for her freshman year for this very reason. I think that the risk of community spread, which leads to school spread, was just too high for our family. Still, the state stands pat. Arizona's health director, Kara Chris, speaking to our news partners at KTAR News. It really is a case-by-case -case basis. You have to look at those extenuating circumstances. So if you would have multiple classrooms in a school that had cases, that might signal that you've got ongoing transmission. The Arizona Teachers Association says a recent staff survey showed three out of four teachers are still very concerned about contracting COVID-19. So if the idea is it's either everybody in distance learning or everybody on campus that wants to be on campus, no, I, I don't think very many districts or school sites have the ability to guarantee they can keep everybody safe. Right now on ABC 15, you'll find the list of districts with COVID-19 dashboards so you can stay better informed as to where the cases are. In Scottsdale, Adam Waltz, ABC 15, Arizona. Well, a big sigh of relief and maybe a cheer even as families in the Crown King area are back home this weekend after they were forced to evacuate because of the horse fire. Now, it has burned more than 9,500 acres so far. No specifics on how it started. Investigators only saying that it was human caused. And this morning, it's only residents that are allowed back in. No visitors yet. That fire is more than 60% contained right now, which is uh, making some progress. Today, the town is holding an online auction starting at noon, and all of the money raised, it will be going to the Crown King Fire Department. You can find more information on the Crown King Facebook page. Many of their regular fundraisers, they were canceled this year because of COVID-19. And officials have shut down parts of the Tonto National Forest because of the bushfire, not because of the flames. Those were put out over the summer. Now the nearly 190,000 acres that burned pose a risk of dangerous flash flooding because there's not that brush to keep it from flowing there. The closures will last until March. Yeah, and so that's definitely an area of concern, even though our rain chances are starting to back off a little bit here in the valley, just east of the valley there in that burn scar area, they still could see some pockets of heavy downpours, and so that would cause some flash flooding. But the big story today is going to be the winds here in the valley anyway. Right now, it's in the upper 60s. It's a really nice morning out there this afternoon. Not even that warm, 86 degrees. That's nice and comfortable, but those breezes, if you've still got your patio umbrellas open, Open, you need to close them because today valley winds will be around 15 miles an hour with gusts at times, possibly up to 25, even 30 miles an hour. And across the high country, it is going to be downright windy. Get those hair ties and hats ready and hold on to them because we're looking at sustained winds around 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 50 miles an hour. So we'll talk about the timing of those winds and also our temperatures are going to get cooler. We're talking a 20 degree change over the the next 24 hours here. So we'll go over it coming up in that full, most accurate forecast. All right, no, hey, thank you so much. And it is game day here in the Arizona Cardinals. Guess what? They've scored themselves another prime time game. Well matched, well deserved. They are must watch TV, really. Uh, originally, the Sunday night football matchup was going to be the Buccaneers and the Raiders, but after Las Vegas reported multiple positive COVID cases this week, the slot was given to the Cardinals and the Seahawks. That makes uh, a back-to-back -back national TV games for Arizona. They're coming off of a hot win against the Dallas Cowboys on Monday night. Kickoff is tonight at 5.30 on NBC. Can't wait, can't wait. All right, 6.09 now on your Sunday morning. Millions of new voters getting ready to have their voices heard this election coming up. A young Valley voter shares why November 3rd, 2020 means so much for her and her family. And a summer tradition finally coming to an end. It's the last day to get that fair food from your car. We'll have details coming up.
Welcome back, everybody. First time young voters. They are expected to come out in record numbers uh, this year, many of them just out of high school, but ready to tackle the big issues. ABC 15's uh, Nick Saletti now speaking with an ASU student who is keeping her family's legacy going. It's definitely taking some getting used to, but overall, I feel like it'll be worth it in the end. But for now, Sofia Hernandez is managing her full-time course load at ASU and is about to add another responsibility. It's something she's waited her whole life to do. It'll be cool that my opinion is being heard and it's like my first time actually being able to take advantage of having, like living in a democracy where I am able to do that. Sophia is just one of the millions of first-time voters across the nation. According to Pew Research, 10% of all eligible voters this year belong to Gen Z. That's people between the ages of 18 and 23. And it's like our civil duty. Like, like I said, we have the opportunity to vote, so why not take advantage of that? Especially even if you're young, even if you feel like it might not affect you, do it for like the people that it will affect. I think you got Clinton Gore inauguration. It was really so much fun. And, and Sophia has had plenty of good examples. And I was always kind of the worker bee, but that was probably the most fun. You get out and you, uh, you canvas um, the uh, different areas and you do voter registration. Politics have always been a real family affair. Her grandmother, Delia Saldate, has volunteered for campaigns and organizations for the last 40 years. Even if it's just a quick conversation in the car, politics are always top of mind. I called her mom, did Sophia register to vote? She goes, oh yeah, she did. I go, okay, I'm good, I'm happy. And uh, the, the fact that she did that on her own makes me very proud. From door knocking all the way to President Bill Clinton's second inaugural ball in 1997, Delia has quite the memorabilia collection, but it's about more than just the memories. Delia, who works here at Chicanos por la Causa, says the impact is what matters the most, especially as a Hispanic voter. Here in Arizona, nearly a quarter of all eligible voters this year are Hispanic, according to Pew Research. We might be a minority, uh, but we will be a majority in the near future. We are a growing uh, population. We have a lot of youth. So it, I think it's very important that the Latino vote get counted, that the Latino, Latino get out to vote, that the Latino get out and make their voice heard. It's just important. For Delia, these photos and newspapers tell a story and more importantly, teach a lesson about how far we've truly come. You also have to remember that there was a time in our, our life when the ballot booth only allowed one gender, one race. Uh, now we all have that opportunity. It doesn't matter what color you are, what, what, what um, religion you practice, what sexual orientation you may have. You have the right. You, if you're a woman, you can go vote now. Why aren't you doing it? It's important because those people are going to represent me. To be able to be involved how my Nana was, that's very exciting. And I, it's like definitely an inspiration, everything. And like, look, being able to see all the history is definitely inspiring to be able to like know that I have the opportunity to do this now. And it's And that was Nick Saletti reporting, and Pew Research shows that for the first time, Hispanics will be the largest minority group that's eligible to vote. In fact, Hispanics will make up just over 13% of all eligible voters this year, and we are just nine days away from Election Day. You can head to abc15.com vote for more information about voting and all of the deadlines that you need to know. Well, if we can all agree on one thing, it is that we need a break from the extreme temperatures and we are finally getting it. This morning clouds and radar showing us we're seeing just a few passing sprinkles west of the valley here out in the Tonopah and Gila Bend area, but otherwise we're staying dry this morning here in the valley. Temperatures are down a couple of degrees from this time yesterday. We're in the low to mid 60s across much of the valley, 64 in Levine, 66 in Tempe, 65 in Cape 
Cave Creek right now. Across the state, we're seeing 60s to our south, 70s to our west, and we're starting the morning off in the 50s in the Verde Valley area as well as Sholo. Flagstaff and the Grand Canyon down to the 40s this morning, so you're actually a little bit warmer than you were this time yesterday. Futurecast showing us we will continue to see lots of cloud cover here until about 9 o'clock this morning. Then the clouds start to move out of the valley, but they stay to our east and to the southeastern portion of the valley. We could see a stray shower still closer to lunchtime, but more likely in the areas of Casa Grande and Globe. Again, staying dry here in the Phoenix area. And then later this afternoon, we could see some isolated thunderstorms in the Four Corners area starting at about 3 o'clock. And then snow chances move in late tonight to the high country. And here in the valley, our rain chances pick up after 7 o'clock. And again, more likely in those overnight hours. And it's still just a 10% chance of rain here in the valley. The metrics have been changing a little bit. As for the rest of the day, I expect we'll stay dry here in the valley, but cooler. As we work our way from the 60s into the 70s, we're actually going to stay in the 70s through lunchtime. So lunch on the patio might be a great idea today, although you're going to need something to weigh down those napkins and close up the patio umbrella because it is going to get windy. At noon, we'll be at 81 degrees and climbing from there into the mid 80s. 85 in Glendale as well as Scottsdale. 86 in Mesa, Ahwatukee and Goodyear. 80s in Anthem and Cave Creek today. Remember, the average for this time of year is 85, so we're finally on track with where we should be at this time of year. Temperatures across the state going to be cooler than we saw yesterday as well. 86 in Casa Grande, 85 in Safford, and staying in the mid 80s in the Mojave County area and the Colorado River Valley. Up to our north, 70 in Sedona, so that's close to a 10 degree temperature drop from yesterday. Upper 60s in Prescott and Payson, mid 60s in Sholo and Window Rock. Flagstaff staying in the 50s for today. So as we look ahead to our seven day forecast here, we're going to see a 20 degree drop in temperatures over the next 24 hours. Monday, our high looks to be 68 degrees right now. We're keeping in that 20% chance of rain, but again, it would most likely happen when most of us are sleeping in the overnight hours Sunday into Monday. Tomorrow morning, our lows are going to be in the 50s, and then the next couple of mornings, our morning lows drop into the 40s. We haven't seen temperatures like this, guys, since March, so you may have to go dig into the back of the closet to find any of that warmer gear, a sweater, a jacket, something to get you through the start of the work week. Then by Wednesday, a little more mild. We're back in the 70s, 80s return by Thursday, and right now, Halloween is looking to be dry and mostly clear skies with highs in the upper 80s, so no need to adjust those costumes if you're having a, a family party at the house or if you are going to venture out and take the kids, you know, to a couple of doors to knock on, then I don't think that they're going to have to bundle up too much because we will still be a little more mild by the time we get to the end of this week. But what a nice break for all of us, Mark, with temps in the 40s in the morning, 60s in the afternoon. Sounds like fall. Yeah, absolutely. And I am all for it. No, hey, thank you so much. Well, Goodyear's drive through Fall Festival is sold out, but you've still got a chance to visit. Tonight is first come, first served at Goodyear's Ballpark. You can catch all of the spooky sights from the comfort of your car. There will be trick-or-treating giveaways, a virtual costume contest, and a whole lot of fun. And today is the last day of the drive through Fair Food event at the Arizona State Fairgrounds. It is your final chance to get your favorites like funnel cakes and fried Twinkies, or fried Oreos, if you prefer. All right, well, coming up, we're gonna be speaking with a financial expert, how to get your finances under control, even in the middle of a pandemic. Some great advice straight ahead. October is financial planning month, but in a time of COVID-19 when so many people are struggling, there's been so much job loss, how do you even begin to tackle that? So our financial planner, Graham Williams from Optimus Retirement, is joining us with some tips. So great to see you again, Graham. Thank you, Nohe. So we have to start with the issue of job loss. And people who don't have any money, there's a recent survey from Pew Social Trends that says more than half of lower income households have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 through job loss. That's true. And one of the things we see is that, in fact, decades of progress women have made 
in the economy has been reversed by COVID as well, because women are disproportionately represented in industries like hospitality, uh, tourism, and so on. And so a lot of these, especially in our state, we've seen a tremendous drop in tourism. Uh, one of the other things we see is that amongst Black and Hispanic Americans, hospitalizations for COVID are disproportionate as well. And that has hurt them tremendously. Also, uh, we see that uh, in similar hands-on industries where there has been complete shutdown, that has disproportionately affected uh, people of color as well. And the, the other thing we see is that actually in terms of testing, testing is taking longer within certain communities as well. The other thing you see that affects a lot of women and families is uh, child care with schools being closed and so on, child care has fallen on families and a lot of women have stayed home to take care of the children. And so there's been a lot of dislocation in various communities because of this and the economic effect has been very significant. So when we're looking at issues like that, and we've definitely talked about all of those being a very real problem right here in Arizona, how do you even begin to talk about financial planning? Is that even feasible? Yeah, I, I think it is. And I think, in fact, in many ways, this is this is teaching us the importance of financial planning. So the first thing I would say is we still have to look at our goals. A lot of us feel like we're in the twilight zone here and nothing changes every day. But time is passing. Goals like college for the kids and our own retirement are still going to happen. So we need to set up goals and start planning. One of the big things that we've certainly learned through all of this is when it comes to planning and having a goal, you also have to have an emergency fund. You got to have a backup plan. Wasn't, wasn't that the, the number one thing that we see is people need to have an emergency fund for unforeseen circumstance. And this has been the mother of all unforeseen circumstances, right? So we recommend three to six months of expenses available in a liquid form, which would have helped a lot of people. And this is one of the reasons the government has been trying to come up with new programs because people don't have that. One of the things that came out of the CARES Act this year is that you can take up to $100,000 from your retirement plan. If you're under 59 and a half, you don't have to pay the traditional 10% penalty. The other thing you can do is you can take a loan from your 401k up to $100,000. And then right now, it's because it's hard to think in the short term, because money is so tight, then you're saying maybe long-term planning. Let's not it, forget that. Let's not forget that. So it's important to rec recognize that if we're going to meet those goals we have, we have to have a long-term investment plan. And that's stocks, bonds, cash, real estate. It's important to talk to an advisor about which ones and how much you should own of those things based on the goal that you're setting. We can't let our goals slip away because of this situation. It is going to end and we are going to be back to, to normal at some point. We don't want to lose all this time if we can avoid it. Absolutely. And then at a certain point, you do need help sometimes. It is right. a lot to manage. So, so when do we do that and how do we do that with you? Okay, so I recommend, first of all, that if you're within five to 10 years of retirement and you have questions, you certainly should seek some advice from an advisor. As I mentioned, we have plenty of tools on our website at Optimist Retirement that can help people to organize things for a financial plan. But don't let this stop you. Seek out advice and help because it's so important. We can't let a year or two slip away from our lives and then the future becomes less certain. We need to be keeping that in mind all the time. Graham Williams, Absolutely. always helpful advice and information, especially during this time where money is very tight. We thank you for your time. Thank you, Noah.